In this video, I'm going to be trying to make a computer, but with all of the character of this miner's lamp. And I'm going to be trying to work with materials like leather and brass, and uh, who knows what this is going to look like. But uh, join me as I find out. This video is sponsored by Trade. Find the perfect coffee for your tastes with their online quiz, always freshly roasted and delivered straight to your door. Get 30% off your first coffee by clicking the link below. So with this particular build, I'm going to start from the inside out by mounting together the computer hardware into a single bare unit. To keep the build's footprint relatively small, I'm using an ITX motherboard with a tiny SFX class power supply, and you can see the specs of the rest of the components on screen. To hold these components together, I'm going to make a small rig starting with two short lengths of copper pipe, which need the motherboard mounting points marked onto them. After drilling these out, I can now use some little nut inserts to add threads to them. This is a super useful tool by the way, and is perfect for jobs like this, so you can find a link to it in the description if it looks handy for your own work too. Now it's time for some thread lock to keep some little brass pillars in place. These are perfect for pushing the two pipes away from the motherboard, making essentially two strong and stiff rails. But it's not quite finished yet, as I want to add some brass braces to them to make them a single solid unit, so that they can later support the power supply and SSDs. As brass and copper are able to be brazed together, I'm going to add a little bit of flux to each surface and tack them together with a beefy soldering iron. This isn't very strong, but it's just enough to hold the two pieces of piping at the correct distance away from one another once they're removed from the motherboard, allowing me to use a blowtorch to refresh each joint, properly brazing them together thanks to the much higher temperature. So after cleaning it up with some wire wool, it looks great, and I can now just mark and drill out the holes required for the power supply, and also the SSDs. To the sides of the copper pipes I've also added some more threaded inserts, which are essential for supporting the rig as you'll soon see. I can now mount the motherboard in place, and plug in all of the cables. As it's so exposed, it's actually super easy to wire everything up. So with it all together now, I could technically just hook it up to a monitor and add a keyboard and mouse, and it would be good to go. Um, but obviously it would be a bit fragile, and obviously it, it looks interesting, but um, we can do better. So I went on an eBay session and found some really interesting materials that I thought would make for an interesting looking computer. And I ended up getting a really nice piece of aged leather, as well as some brass vent covers and various brass strips. The strips themselves are going to form the structural outer shell, and I want to attempt some gentle curves with this to give it a more vintage look. So the first thing to do is to bend them to my desired shape. Now literally the only metal working tool I have is this pipe bender, and I know it's not designed for this job, but it just about bends the strips if I put enough effort into it. Getting them both to be bent the right size however is very challenging, and I've managed to get them somewhat close, but they're definitely not perfect. Considering what I was using to do it however, it's not bad. Well, that was quite difficult to do, but with them now bent into shape, it's time to join them together, for which I'll be using some brass sheeting. Now, bending this brass sheet is actually a lot easier, which isn't too surprising as it's so much thinner than the previous stuff, and after yet more wrangling, it looks like this. Not bad. Now, do they fit? Yeah, just about. I'm happy with it anyway. Now, time for some more brazing with the blowtorch. So with that done, um, it's cooled down and this is what I'm left with. It's a great shape and it's very strong, uh, but it looks extremely rough and uh, messy. And I'm not sure whether that's down to my lack of skill and experience or whether that's just how brass looks once it's been covered in flux and has a blowtorch adding. Um, it can't really ex be expected to look great afterwards. So uh, let's clean this up and uh, see how it looks. Now initially I used an excessive amount of solder, so I've got to file down the residue from this, which isn't very fun, but I'll know for next time to go a bit more easy on it. That said, I am starting to see some brass colour again, which is a good sign. Next up, some sandpaper. 
At this point, it's just going to take forever on my own, but that's okay. That's what helpful sisters are for. As a team, we really got stuck in and gave it some serious elbow grease, and it looks loads better already. Still, there are plenty of scratches, so we're going to move to using wet and dry sandpaper of finer and finer grit values. This makes the surface gradually smoother and smoother, and eventually the hope is to reach a mirror shine. But it's going to take a while, so I'm going to leave Al to it whilst I work on the side panels. For these I'm using some thin plywood, cutting out various holes and slots with a jigsaw. Now these being plywood, they aesthetically don't look great, but that's okay because I'm going to be covering it with something else to give it a better appearance. And that is what the leather is for. All I have to do here is carefully cut out the shape of the side panels. Being very thick, however, it does need quite a bit of work getting through it. But interestingly, it can be drilled and sanded without a problem, so is a fairly forgiving material to work with. These pieces can now be glued to the plywood, and once it's set, I can screw the fan grills in place and add some brass edging for the slots I cut out, which are for the power supply's ventilation. Also needed is a power switch and a USB port and card reader. Now to make the card reader look nice, I've actually made this little brass cover, which I can just glue in place. I really love brass at this point. Look at it, it's just so cool. Anyway, I love how these have turned out. The brass adds some wonderful accenting and looks really good against the dark antique leather. I've even used it to make a new cover for the ports on the motherboard, and there's a real juxtaposition between the high-tech ports and the natural leather. With that done, it's time to check out what Al has achieved with the polishing. Honestly, it's hard to imagine what it looked like before, and it goes to show what a great material brass is for making things out of at home. Looking at it from the side, you can see that it isn't perfectly square, but I personally don't mind this actually, as it goes along with the homemade character of the build, and actually helps the overall vintage look. Now if you're wondering what these holes are on the back, I made them earlier, and they're vent holes for the power supply, and there's also a gap for the motherboard's ports. The reason the holes in particular look so good is that I finally bought myself a proper metal drill bit, which keeps itself centred and steps up gradually one millimetre at a time, resulting in accurate and neat holes. Now I want the build to have a top strap so that I can take it out and about, so I've drilled a few holes in the top for adding some vintage brass handles that I found in an antique shop. These again needed a bit of polishing, but they shined up nicely. Ah, oh, I love brass. For the strap itself, I used a spare piece of my leather and made some loops with some cool looking brass caps, which once in place makes for a really nice grip. With that done, all of the individual components are ready to be fixed together, so I'm going to first screw one of the side panels to one of the copper pipes underneath the motherboard, after which it can be lowered into the outer shell. Lastly, the other panel can be screwed in place, which completes the build. What do you think to that? Personally, I absolutely love it. It looks amazing. I love the look of the leather and the brass and even little accents like this uh, brass cover for the SD card reader and the fact that you can see the copper pipe through the power supply vent, which is the internal design being shown off through the exterior. I think it's great. Now, 
it definitely lives up to the original goal, which was to have the soul and character of this miner's lamp. And I think it's a testament that they can sit next to each other and not look out of place that that has succeeded. So I'm over the moon. Now, in a minute, I will be testing the thermals and also going through some of my design choices with this and obviously giving it a test as a computer to see if it works. Um, but before then, I need a coffee break. Now, after water, coffee is actually my favourite drink, and I drink it all the time when I'm working on projects and need a break. So I'm very happy to say uh, that today's sponsor, Trade, is all about the coffee. They've partnered with 50 of the best roasters to provide over 400 coffee varieties for you to choose from. But if that sounds like a bit of a big number, don't worry. Uh, you just take an online quiz and it matches you up with the best coffee for you and your preferred brewing method. Now it's matched me up with Irving Farm, but I've also got some really exciting sounding stuff called uh, Pink Bourbon Honey in bean form, so I'll be uh, trying that out later. But it's worth noting that they always roast the coffee to order, so it's always super fresh when you get it delivered straight to your door at no extra cost. It's a great way as well of experiencing new flavours and tastes through their subscription option, which tailors the uh, coffee type based on your feedback from the previous one you got. So to get 30% off your first order, go to the link in the description. So big thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video and happy coffee making. Now, in truth, I haven't just built this to be an aesthetic piece. I do want to do some serious work with it, as the idea is for it to be the main editing PC for this channel. And that's the reason behind some of my component choices, such as the powerful processor and the lack of a graphics card. You see, the editing software I use doesn't need the graphics card to decode smoothly, so I thought I'll just leave it out. And as well, that's the reason why there will be eight terabytes of internal storage here. Uh, as that will give me plenty of storage to store all of the clips. Now, I've also built it to be semi-portable, as you know, and the reason behind that is because I would like to take it between here and home. So when I need to do some editing in the evening, I can just take it with me, and it's like taking a briefcase home after work. And uh, some of you will be wondering, why don't I just use a laptop instead of doing that? Well, the reason is that I don't like the ergonomics of laptops. And although I could just plug it into a monitor, um, that, at that point I'd be spending a lot more money for something that wouldn't even be as powerful as this. So I just thought I'll make something unique and interesting and uh, perfect for me, and this is what this is. Now in regards to thermals, the big CPU cooler does an excellent job of keeping the processor cool and quiet. I have been editing this very video actually, and I can barely hear it during use, which is perfect and means that it won't disturb me whilst I'm working and also won't appear in any audio recordings that I do for narration. Now the hope eventually as well is to make a little dock for it on the wall so that when I arrive I can just slide it in place and it plugs in all of the cables on the back without me having to do it manually. Uh, so that's a little time saver and I'll probably make a video about that at some point when I get round to it. Um, but other than that, that's it for this video and I hope you've enjoyed seeing the processes involved in building this pretty epic and unique PC. And uh, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and maybe consider hitting the bell icon, which does notify you next time I upload. Now, I don't upload often, but I always try and make it unique and interesting. And who knows what I'll be uploading next. Now, um, you've been watching DIY Perks and I hope I see you next time. Goodbye for now.